I want to go back and take a look at something. There's a, a, a channel called Honest Trailers. They do a great job of parroting the movies. They did a program a week before the Oscars, and they went through all the different nominees, and they did a short bit on all of them. And I want to show you what they did about the film that actually did win Best Picture, Moonlight, because it shows that the important part about that was a political agenda. You have to understand, the Oscars are a political award that is put out there. People who are pushing their political, their social, and their sexual agenda. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. So here's a clip of that. Follow along on the poetic unfolding of a life beautifully directed by Barry Jenkins as this young, black, gay man struggles to escape from poverty and drug addiction told across three decades based on a play, based on the life story of its author. So yeah, I'd say it's nominated for an Oscar. It's got all of the checkpoints. And yes, it was the one that won. They knew that was going to be the one that won because it went through every checkpoint of their agenda. They have an agenda that they want to push on us. And I want to take a look at how that's starting to look. The agenda that they're pushing on our kids to sexualize our kids at an earlier and earlier age to confuse them about their gender. We've had the American Pediatric Society talking about how there are only two genders and this is really child abuse when you're doing this to kids to try to confuse them. Let's take a look at this article on InfoWars today. Disney Channel cartoon features the network's first same-sex kiss. A crowd of cartoon characters appear to deliver same-sex kisses to gay and lesbian partners. This is from season two episode of Star versus the Forces of Evil entitled Just Friends. And when you look at this picture and you look at these stills that are there in the article, I mean, here's a couple that are isolated and everybody around them is doing it. Okay. This is brave new world that is being sold to our kids by Disney. And of course they've sold magic and all this kind of stuff for a long time, but now they're focusing on the sexual agenda. And they say throughout this first on scene, uh, Screen same-sex uh, personal display of affection. Disney has periodically included non-heterosexual relationships in its TV shows, like the lesbian couple in Good Luck Charlie and a gay couple in Gravity Falls. Viewers have also speculated about the possibly gay characters included in the, in the films Zootopia, Finding Dory, and Frozen. Disney has also reportedly been entertaining the prospect of an LGBT Disney princess with a campaign last year urging the cartoon giant to turn the princess Elsa from the film Frozen into a lesbian princess. Well, you don't have to wait any longer. The Telegraph in the UK pointed out today that Disney's going to have its first exclusively gay moment in Beauty and the Beast. This is going to be the live action version of it. They say Disney's moving firmly into a new era as it introduces its first exclusively gay moment. And I want to read you what the director says about this. This was an interview that the director gave with a uh, magazine called Attitude. And the director, Bill Condon, said... This character, LaFoe, maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. I don't pay any attention to Disney's Beauty and the Beast. But anyway, it says, it's somebody who on one day wants to be Gaston and another day he wants to kiss Gaston. And Josh makes something really subtle and really delicious out of it. And that's what has its payoff at the end, which I don't want to give away, but it's a nice, exclusively gay moment in a Disney movie. See, they're pushing this on your kids. When I look at that picture, whether it was homosexual or heterosexual kids over in the background, what they're doing is they're putting peer pressure on. They're normalizing behavior for very young children that is not age appropriate. And we know where this is all headed. The next place is headed is, of course, the transgender bathrooms. That's what this is all about. And moving towards pedophilia. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But take a look at the penalty that Target has paid for pushing this agenda in their stores. Their stocks are down $15 billion since promoting their transgender agenda. And they were pushing it very hard in their stores. They were at the forefront of trying to push this with their product lines, then pushing it with their bathrooms. Now their value is down 30% while Walmart has gained 3% in the same period. This is a story on Infowars.com from Breitbart. But where is this all headed? Of course, it's all headed towards normalizing pedophilia. And we have an article from the uh, Free Thought talking about what's happening in the UK. Two things. Number one, how they are pulling back from naming streets after politicians or heroes because they're afraid, it's happened so much, they're afraid that after they name these streets, then they're going to find out that the person has been exposed as a child molester. They say, and this is a 
guideline that has been sent out to city councils in the UK. They said, don't do this. They say it avoids a possible occurrence of future information coming to light that may then taint that specific road name based on an individual and give rise to costly street renaming procedures. They say this may seem odd, but remember that pedophilia has long been a history of the British elite. Matter of fact, you go back several decades to Edward Heath, former prime minister of the UK. He's been accused by the police chief as being a pedophile. And they had made his home in Salisbury a memorial museum back in 2015 to mark the 50th anniversary of him becoming the conservative party leader. Then the exhibition, they say, is now a glaring embarrassment as dozens of his former victims have come forward exposing his disgusting sexual crimes. British citizens refuse to patronize this shrine to a monster, so it sits empty. Now understand, this is a conservative party leader, and these are people that the establishment has covered up. We saw that happen with Jimmy Seville. He was investigated by Scotland Yard several times, and it was shut down by the people who were higher up. They did a documentary on him after he died at the BBC, exposing what he was, and the people who were higher up at the BBC shut that down. Do we give a pass to people because they agree with us politically, because they're conservative, we're conservative, because they support Trump and we support Trump? See, this is the issue that I had with what was going on with Milo. We don't want to move that line closer to pedophilia. That's where these people are going. We don't want to blur that line. We don't want to erase that line because we agree with somebody who, uh, politically. And that's precisely what was happening with us. We do not want to give people a pass because of their politics when they engage in this kind of uh, issues. And what we're talking about here, folks, is consenting adults. I had a lot of people get very angry with me. You say you're a libertarian. We're going to unfollow you on Twitter. I frankly don't care. I'm going to stand before God one day, and I'm not going to be asked how many Twitter followers I have. And you will too. And you're not going to be asked that question either. And we do not throw our children under the bus for any political agenda, any sexualized agenda that is coming from the media, especially. Look at what else is happening in the UK. As this is becoming an epidemic there, they say, also from Free Thought Project, the UK police announced that there's so many pedophiles in the country that it's exploding at such a rapid rate that they will stop arresting them. Because police cannot cope with the huge influx of reports on child abuse, they now say pedophiles whose only crime is viewing child pornography should undergo rehabilitation instead of going to prison. Remember when all this stuff happened with Milo. He was only talking about it. He never committed it. And he was a victim. He's a victim of people like this. Do we want to perpetuate that by talking about it? By normalizing it? Because of politics? No. No, we don't. So now what they're saying is that in three years, the number of child abuse reports have skyrocketed by 80%. And the chief constable who's head of Operation Hydrant, this is uh, something that was set up to investigate multiple al allegations of historic sexual abuse across the UK. The BBC reports, he knew his view would cause nervousness and draw headlines because he said the number of reports of abuse were such huge proportions that they cannot look at these particular crimes, the things that are going to be moving people towards actually acting on what they have created as urges. So they're not going to pay any attention to people because they say there are literally tens of thousands of men who are seeking to exploit children online with a view to meeting them. So they're going to focus on that rather than the half a million individuals who are engaged in child pornography. That is the sickness that faces the West. And where does it come from? It all starts with Diz Gay pushing all this agenda. And this is Hollywood throughout. They have a political agenda. They have a sexual agenda. They're all tied together. And we have to understand that they're pushing that agenda. Then we have the other issue. Remember that Zbigniew Brzezinski talked about a technocratic elite. Well, the technology is the key part of this that we need to be concerned about. We've seen yet another nightmare robot from Boston Dynamics, and they called it a nightmare-inducing robot. The people who created it called it a nightmare. This thing is a mixture of wheels and arms. They said it only has 10 actuated joints, and so it is significantly less complex than the walking robots. The wheels, they say, are efficient on flat surfaces, while the legs can go almost anywhere by combining wheels and legs. This robot that they called Handle is the best of both worlds, and so the founder of this organization, which was bought by Google, says that uh, this is a nightmare-inducing robot. Even Google communications staff sought to distance the company from the hardware, they report. 
According, this is an email that was leaked to Bloomberg. They said uh, such technology could be terrifying. Yes, you should be very afraid of this. You should organize to oppose this. And yet what we see is the people who are involved in technology, like the people at Wired Magazine, talk about how this is really an evolutionary marvel. They look at the very sophisticated technology and they rejoice in that. They say the world laughed when we looked at the DARPA robotics challenge of just 2015. But look at how quickly we see this new life form evolving. This is another form of sickness that we have to get over. We have to understand that this is merely a tool, but there is such a thing as good and evil. This will be your overall. This will be the weapon of evil men. Stay with us when we come back. We're going to talk to Ted Malik. We're going to have clips of Alex Jones's interview with him earlier today on the radio show. He is the man that we need to go to the European Union. He is America's Nigel Farage. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is one of the biggest secrets out there. The missing link of why our ancestors, whether you were in Africa or ancient Albion, which is England today, why our ancestors were so much stronger. I mean, there are huge archeological reports, all sorts of anthropology studies, you can look them up for yourself, that show that humans, just an average farmer of 10,000 years ago in England, was stronger than Olympic athletes today. In the final equation, everyone knows our modern society has lost its vitality. The sperm counts are down like 90%. People are falling apart. They're totally depressed. They're unhappy. What is going on? Every ancient culture was obsessed with what I'm about to reveal to you. Today, we call it bone broth. And for thousands of years, our ancestors enjoyed its benefits before it became lost to our modern diets of processed junk. That's why I'm so excited to announce the product that is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown of InfoWars Life products. Caveman, we lost our vitality because we just ignored the ancient traditions. Everyone knew that you used all the parts of the animal. You used the skin to cover yourself for shelter. You used the meat for sustenance, the fat for cooking, but you used the bones for strength. We are now introducing Caveman by InfoWarsLife.com, the ultimate in true paleo nutrition with bone broth, turmeric root, chaga mushroom, and seven total primal superfoods in a single great tasting formula. The bone is so amazing. From the outside structure full of minerals and key cofactors to the marrow that produces the blood for the body, this is the engine of the life essence. I've made a lot of important points here, but this is the one you need to research for yourself because it's so key. High quality bone broth helps support healthy muscles and connective tissue, while the active compounds in turmeric do battle on the cellular level and help fight free radicals. And collagen is essential to aid healthy tendons, ligaments, and muscle tissue. This is a absolute win-win. You get an amazing product produced right here in America. You support InfoWars and all we're doing to promote freedom and the restoration of our republic and promotion of freedom worldwide. The journey towards better health and Giving our bodies these amazing compounds that God created starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Three years in the making, incredible research, and the very best ingredients. I'm Alex Jones, and I may not be a caveman, but compared to these trendies out there in the street, I'm as close as it gets. Join me at InfoWarsLife.com and get your caveman formula today.